So guys, I've come down to check a tree fishery today to do a little bit of skimmer fishing. Gonna fish about eight to 10 meters in front of me. This is a uh, lake one. This side of the lake, it's only about three foot deep. So as it's a bit warmer than normal in, shall we say in October, I've chose to fish this side because I think a lot of the fish are gonna still be in this in the shallower water. Um, bait wise, pretty simple. Um, I will use this as well, even when it gets colder. I'll just like obviously bring down the amount of bait a lot of put into the peg. So we're going with the ever faithful Dynamite F1 2 mil pellets and then with the new F1 sweet corn as well both by Dynamite. The corn is also available I think in krill, a natural, um, a match and a strawberry and a scopex as well. So check them out, they're all in the shops now guys and with these F1 pellets. Um, so please watch all the way through the video, there's going to be some tips in there, some bits at the end. Um, and uh, thank you very much for watching. Cheers, guys. So guys, rigs for today are a 0.4 Guru Pinger, which is that float there. So that's a 0.4. I'm fishing 015 N-gauge mainline down to a four inch 013. And if you see that, 013 N-gauge hook length. There's my bulk, just a straightforward bulk because it's so shallow. Don't, I'm not really fussed with droppers, just literally the last four inches will flutter the corn through. And then I have got a size 14 and I've also got another rig with a 16 Guru LWG on there. So only other rig I've got set up today, guys, is exactly the same. It's just a slightly stronger elastic. It's the Dower Orange F1 elastic. So, which is, you can just see that there. So that's just a little bit stronger. The other one I think is more of equivalent to like a five or a six, and it's a hybrid, so it's a lot softer. Um, but yeah, this is if we do start to come amongst the carp and the F1s, I've got that there. Yeah, just skin fishing. So this side of the lake's quite shallow, it's only about two and a half, three feet. We're gonna be fishing micros and corn. So I'm just potting in the odd little pot. and then lowering the float into the area. So like, a bit like carp, setting a little trap. Here we go, guys, skim up. going to feed every time I go in to start with just to see what happens if the bites obviously reduce then I might feed a little bit of bait just to try and see what's there in the peg and what they what how much bait they want over their heads little indications again so it's still fishing a peg we go, into another fish, a bit bigger this fish, just going to play it for a minute, it's definitely a bigger fish, again just like you normally do in the summer or whatever, just play the fish low, Especially when it's a bigger fish. And we've got a light bottom on here, guys, and a light elastic, so. Hopefully, it's one of the bream and not one of the big carp. Trying to get 
under the tr this tree to my side. Managed to turn him away. You can see how shallow it is in front of me. You can't see it on the thing, but it's kicking up all the silt off the floor. Might even be a tench, I'm not sure yet, or an F1. Not nodding away like a tench. So in winter there's no need to rush. Just let it do its thing. Still can't see what it is yet. But it's giving a good account of itself. I think, I think it's a Thomas. Good old Thomas the Tench. Which if it is, it'll be a nice fish to catch. And it is a Thomas. Cracking Tench. Lovely Tench. Taking the hook deep, so we're just going to get this out. There we go, safely out the fish. There we go, guys. One nice tinker. Right, let's back out to where we were. That wind seems to have calmed off again now. So that's it, just put it in, pot over the top of the float, one little tap, in it goes. Little indication straight away then. Oh no, come off again. If you do start to get that too much, sometimes it's worth going up to a slightly bigger hook. At the moment I'm on a 16. Guru LWG. It's quite a fine hook, but it's a strong hook as well. If the wind gets up, obviously swing it in the direction of the, if you've got toe, so you want it going against the toe, so it holds it still. Don't want it going with the toes, it's, or the wind, if, it, if there is no toe, it's just gonna trot through the peg, which is not what you want, you want it still. All right, not an indication this time, so I'm going to add some feed next put in. Have a little feed. So just a couple of grains of corn. Bit of pellet. And back out. Chosen to fish. It's about nine, ten metres out today. Just get that feed in there and bring that float back over it. Here we go, guys. Nope, she's off. If you 
if I keep getting that, I will go up a slightly bigger, bigger hook. Here we go. I've got one this time. Smaller skimmer this time. But that is bite has come after after that feed. So definitely want some feed in there. Now it's just working out if feed every single pot in, put in, or every other, or every few. But it's just a case of working that out. That out. So I am going to feed again this time. And like I said, if I might change up a hook size yet. Again, three bits of corn, a bit of pellet. another bite so definitely gonna probably get another gonna change the hook size so I've changed to an LWG 14 and that's still tied to 013 I tied these ones myself so it's 013 guru engage and a 14 LWG I'm gonna feed this time so we only just fed a minute ago if we get a fish. Here we go guys, a different straight away, float's gone under, definitely worth the hook size change, a better, better size skimmer as well this time, so it's little things like that, don't be afraid to try it, these fish will still take a fair, relatively big hook still. Again, same as before, three grains of corn, tiny pit, bit of pellets, say so tiny, still probably looking at 30 micro pellets going in. And you've got, you just don't think you need to hit on these commercials, if you, if you know the place you're fishing has got a good head of skimmers, you don't need to go mad with your bait, especially in the winter, because you can turn them off, even though they're not carp, they will can still be funny. If I was in a match, then obviously yeah, I may feed a bit more bait so I don't lose them to the guys either side of me. But yeah, in winter you can still have a good day's fishing even when the carp ain't showing. Especially if, like I said, you know your local venues have got good silver fish heading them. That float to settle again, holding it holding it in that with that toe just keeping it where you want it where that bait's gone in you don't want to be feeding in one area and then putting your float in a different or letting it drag out so it can make all the difference being bang on your bait sometimes you can be just a few inches to the left right or behind it especially with bream and skimmer fishing but at the moment being right on it has been the way Like I said, little lift and drop every now and again, doesn't hurt. Here we go guys, in again, in again. She's an airborne one this one, diving around the peg. I 
nice light elastics coming out, not going to bump the fish when you're playing it. One of the Preston Dura slip elastics I've got in. I think it's equivalent to like a six, to around about six, I think, from memory. Oh, we'll check that for you. Missed that. Just little tiny bites. Could be a few roach in the peg now. In the last couple of bites, they've been really, really lightning fast, which can be indicative of roach. Alright, so we're going back out, we're going to feed the peg again through the toss pot. Still got bubbles out there, so we've still got fish. Turn, it, turn, it, turn the toss pot over, give it a little tap on the pole, and then lift your float and bring it into right where that was, where you've deposited the bait. Also, another thing you can do sometimes if you start to not hit bites, it's because of the silty bottom, is just to set up a new line five, six feet away to your left or your right or behind you a couple of feet just to start afresh. There we go guys, straight after the feed, we've got a fish, another skimmer. So definitely, definitely as you've seen, today is feed pretty much every time you go out. And you can build a lovely weight of these skimmers up quite quickly. There you go, that's one of the smaller ones. Let's get him unhooked, see if we can get another couple more. Another top tip is when skimmer fishing and bream clear, you're always going to have this slime off their bodies. Clean it off your line. I just think the fish can see that or feel it and it puts them off. So again, couple of grains of corn, some pellet in the top, push it down just so it doesn't bounce out when you're pushing the pole out. You can also dip your pole under the water as well, it helps the pellet stick inside your toss pot. That's another good tip, even when you're carp fishing or silver fish fishing. Back out to your spot. Get to your desired length, tap your bait in, and then put your float right in amongst your feed zone. Miss that, and it's bite straight away on the drop there. So we could have definitely have a few roach in the peg. Yeah, definitely think we've got a few roach amongst the skimmers out there. There we go. And that is one of the culprits proving my point right there, ladies and gentlemen. And Mr. Roach, I'll swing him in. Here we go. Where it? Roach do love a bit of sweet corn. Uh, as we've only just fed that time, we'll go back out over it, see if we can get a, another fish. I've also had a big a lump of a carp doing this as well earlier, earlier, but unfortunately I didn't get it on film. So, and that is something you will get in commercial, especially when you're fishing lighter and during the colder months, you're not fishing like really heavy with bait, you're always going to get a chance of a carp. There 
There we go, guys. Fish on. Another skimmer. Exactly what our target was today. It's a smaller one this time. feed this time, especially if we just had a fish out of the swim. A couple of pieces of corn. No worries mate. Check where you're in, in your make sure you're in the right area. Look at where your end of your pole is or where your marker on your pole is. Tap the bait in and lower that float back in to that feed zone again. So that's what it's like with most fishing. It's just working out how they want that bait. Do they want it at all the time? Do they want quite a bit of bait like trickling in through the swim or do they, do they want to just sit, sit and graze over it for a little while and you pick them off like that? It's just, it's just working it out, same as all forms of fishing. Some days they'll want ground bait, just like bigger bream. And you can pick them off that way putting some balls of ground bait in and fishing over the top of it and fish it out and then when the bait bites dry up introduce a new ball There we go, another fish on guys. Looks like another smaller one this time. Oh, slightly bigger this one. These are the ones you really want. And the ones a little bit bigger than this to build your weights. Two to three grains is what I've been feeding during this short little session. Push it down, a little bit of micros over the top. So the micros are the Dynamite Sweet F1, two mils. Bream and Skimmers seem to love them, the whole F1 range in fairness. And I've matched that with the uh, Dynamite F1 corn. So back out over where we've been fishing. Drop your bait in. Lift the float up. Lower it back in. And hopefully we'll have another one in a second. There we go guys. That's a roach this time I think. No, it is a little skimmer. Just, nope, shouldn't have done that. There's a netter. Just lower it back in, reset it over the trap. Of your micros and your corn. There'll still be fish there. We go. Just goes to prove, guys. They are, even when you've lost a lost a fish, there'll be other fish there queuing up. It's one of the better ones. These are the ones we you really want for your weights. So for a couple of hours fishing this afternoon, 
you can do a real nice little weight quite quickly. Like we said earlier on, that hook change has made, made all the difference. Still, obviously, had a couple we haven't hooked, but like I say, with corn, I think personally, you are always gonna get that, especially if the fish aren't really big bream or big massive skimmers. When you're fishing with small skimmers and roach, there's always a chance of that. It's just perseverance. And keep going. There we go, guys. In again. Another nice skimmer for the for this short sesh. There we go guys. There we go, so this is the F1 Sweet Corn. Look at that lovely yellow glow it gives off. And it absolutely smells so nice, I could eat it. The grain sizes are really good. Some bigger kernels in there, some small kernels. So there's a right, there is a mixture in there, but I quite like that. And then these are the sweet F1 Dynamite 2 mils that I've been using as well. There you go guys, look how yummy they look as well. Here we go guys, so got a nice lump of a carp in there, absolutely load of skimmers. And this is fishing pellet, fishing corn over pellet today. So, real nice, great day for, let's say, been down here about two and a half, three hours. So, short on the pole for skimmers. Had a road carp, got a couple of tench in here, which I'll show you in a sec. But happy days guys, had a decent weight there for a couple of hours. It's the carp today guys, happy days. <laughs> 